quick, turn off the camera. All right, everybody, welcome to the September meeting of the UI Interest Group. Oh, Tamara just posted our... in chat. Excellent. Welcome to our new folks. And we're delighted to have you here. Um, we often do spend a few minutes chit-chatting before we get started with our actual agenda, which I will go ahead and do now. Um, so uh, continuing uh, some things that we had going from the last couple of meetings, we have been talking about using a fancy spreadsheet service slash database service of some sort um, to corral uh, the work that we need to do on um, rewriting error messages, renaming uh, reports, display fields, uh, setting up default columns and alignment and things like that for grid columns, and uh, in general, doing an inventory of the user interface elements. And so uh, Ben uh, suggested monday.com, which I'm very excited about because it's much cheaper than Airtable, which was my first um, thought. And as of this morning, we have uh, an evergreen UI workspace set up. Everybody who had signed up as um, an interested party on the old Airtable um, spreadsheet has received an invitation. Um, and by the way, I made you all admins, so everybody can do everything right now. We're still on the free intro plan. Um, we will eventually need to do the paperwork to tell them that we're a nonprofit. Ruth, I might lean on you for that or somebody from the board. Um, Say that one more time. I'm so sorry. I'm distracted by another email. That's okay. We need to eventually, um, not yet, because we're still in the free plan, but we need to submit uh, some paperwork to monday.com's support team to tell them that we're a nonprofit and that we qualify mm -hmm. for their nonprofit pricing. Uh huh. Um, yeah. So um, if we could, uh, if, if you could send me an email to that, so that we begin that yep. chain of information. Oh, good Lord. Okay. Um, and then we can get the appropriate documentation to send to them for that. Awesome. Okay. I, I will don't do that. think that it needs to be, I don't think it needs to be a board action unless you're asking the board to pay for monday.com. No, um, we only have, I think, seven people signed up right now. We can have 10 on the free plan. So we probably won't need a okay. paid plan for a little while. Okay. Um, and, uh, I don't know if anyone on the board was on our list of people, but I put the sign up link uh, in the agenda right under the monday.com uh, item. Okay. And so you can go ahead and join and add yourself uh, to our plan. And I did not, I did not add my name to that right now because I don't feel like I can commit time. I hope to That's in the fair. future, but um, I'm in a little bit of flux in a lot of ways right now. So. I understand. Yes. Uh, so I have set up the basic boards for what we're going to do, and I have not imported any of the data yet. Uh, so you can't really see how this is going to work. And I apologize for that. I probably should not have scheduled this meeting for the end of the quarter every quarter, because that's when I have my hair on fire with deadlines, but uh, such is life. And so um, I will get all of that taken care of in the next couple of weeks and get all of that data moved over that we have scattered in various places right now. Um, but hey, the accounts are set up and the pricing looks like it's gonna work the way we hoped it did. Um, so that's all moving along slowly. Were there any other sort of like meeting logistics or like communications things that we needed to talk about before we dive into talking about uh, style guides and error messages and things like that. No, we're all good. Okay. Uh, so we've been bouncing around from from topic to topic as we go. The last couple of meetings, as we get this group started, um, I like how the agenda sort of reflects my scattered thought process. Um, but we have been looking at, uh, last month we looked at error messages and talked about how we might start rewriting those. Um, and we decided that, hey, it would actually be great to start working on the editorial style guide before we start rewriting <laughs> things, which is, yes, <laughs> smart. <laughs> we should do that. Um, 
And so I thought that we would spend some time today kind of getting things together uh, for our style guide and getting started on that and figuring out which pieces we need specifically to get started on the error messages um, and then what other um, pieces we're going to need uh, that we might not need today. Um, and maybe we can break this up a little bit, um, figure out, oh, the, the holdings, copies, and items is, oh, that kills me. Yes. So yeah, we have um, a, a persistent problem where like one thing or one type of thing is referred to by three or four different names um, in Evergreen. We have some places like Vandalay where inside jokes are outside jokes <laughs> and they need to be the actual name of the thing. Um, we have lots of naming issues and things like that. Uh, so, um, and I apologize for not sending out all these links earlier. I know I sent these this morning and probably none of you have had time to review them yet because you have other things to do in your life. Um, but I think that the Google developers documentation style guide is probably one of the things we're going to want to look at. Um, along with, of course, the dig uh, style guide that um, it's part of their overall documentation style guide. Uh, it's about like halfway down the page. I went ahead and linked directly to the subsection on wording, um, which is followed by linking, which is a little bit useful, but this is a very, um, very short, <laughs> very, um, how do I want to say, like, it's a, it's a very brief introduction to what we need to think about in writing about the interface and writing the text that goes in the interface. The, I definitely want to keep the work that DIG has done, but as you can see, if you go over to the Google guide, um, and let me get this up so I can, sh let me share my screen really quickly. Um, so the Google developer guide is very lengthy. Um, the whole table of contents is there in the left. And I started just at the first part of the language and grammar part, but these other general principles are good to look at. Things like inclusive language and jargon, we're going to want to pay attention to those. Um, but all of these are things that <laughs> sound like, it sounds silly to have to document all these things, but it's mm. actually really important. Um, one of the things that's driving me crazy right now as I work on the grids is that we have some columns that have slashes in the column name, and there's no space on either side of the word, which there shouldn't be in most styles of writing, but for a, a web column, it means that there's no break and the it doesn't like wrap the text on the slash. So it would actually be really helpful if our style guide said, hey, put spaces around the slash when you have... Um, like in a table column name specifically. Um, so all of those little tiny things are things that we need to go over and document. Um, and this is gonna be a big project, um, but I kind of wanted to start with this um, and run this by you all. And let's just start jotting down some ideas. We can open a new Google doc if y'all want to, to jot down some notes um, or we can do it right in the agenda notes on like what, where do we want to start here? Uh, I have the curse of knowledge here. I, I have been writing style guides for web things for 20 years and I don't even know like where to start for this because there's so much in my head. I my instinct and Stephanie, you might say, I've done this before and that's a terrible idea. Um, but my instinct is to start with the things where we've seen trouble. Like, here are a bunch of things that are synonyms and it would help to choose one. And here are, um, you know, cho choices in punctuation and spacing that are creating problems. 
Um, and I just picked those two because they're the two we just mentioned. But I'm sure if we look through some tickets, we will probably find plenty of other things that we know are creating um, accessibility or usability problems. Do we have a place? Um, to I will mention um, the word cancel in things about canceling. Good. I want to cancel a hold and I have a button that says cancel. Am I canceling the hold or am I canceling canceling the hold? <laughs> That's a, that is actually a really great one because in some places it says cancel. I'm not sure if it does say exit or exit without saving. Um, it's also inconsistent like it, whether it's on the left or right. Right. Which uh, doesn't help yeah, either. <laughs> yeah, because the assumption is that if it's going to be on the left, that's your action button. And if it's on, or on the, yeah, on the left, it's going to be your action. On the right, it's going to be your, never mind get out of here without doing anything button stop sharing since, since i'm y'all are just watching me type and that's no good um <laughs> there we was something oh. go ahead oh, we see a lot of problems with uh people are looking for a button that says save and sometimes the button that means save depending on the context says apply and save or save and exit or whatever um in particularly in adding items the apply and save is is actually often it's at the very bottom of the screen, which depending on how many attributes you're showing, maybe requires scrolling down. But meanwhile, there's a save button for the templates, which is you could be mistaken that you know you're you're trying to save your item, but that template bar is sort of in if you have the unified editor on is like in a very prominent place, and and uh, we see things where people are inadvertently saving a template um, when they are just trying to save the item. Good point. Um, I found the thing I was looking for, which um, let me see if I can copy directly to a heading. No, I cannot. OK. Uh, right down here, if you scroll down to where it says guideline, um, this is how I think we should do uh, modals. Okay, where should we be looking, Stephanie? There's a, a heading that says guideline. This is in the Googles? No, no, uh, in the, no. the, here, let me share. Uh, okay. the, she posted the posted... link in chat, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I did. That's okay. I missed that. I'm just going to share real quick. Here we go. Yeah, I I like. I love that this is documented, like yeah, <laughs> laid mm -hmm. out. You know, so is it just me or most of our models flop way flip flop way out in decision? They are flopped, mm -hmm. and but and not all other... of them. No, and not consistently. <laughs> not consistent. And the other problem is we've got the X at the top uh, right corner, and that's what's auto-focused because it's the first focusable thing in the modal. So we have to put an auto-focus attribute on the button that we want to be the default action, which should be the one here that's decision. It should be the primary button. Um, but we're going to have to go through and do a modal cleanup. And I'm actually planning to tackle that in the next couple of months after we get past these this week's contract deadlines. And I will say too, I think I described the decision button being on the left. Uh, I'm left-handed. <laughs> That's okay. Well, you know, they get, it, <laughs> they get it right 50% of the time. I, I mouse with my right hand, but it, it only because that's the world we live in. And if I it's will the mention... default- that default actions have been controversial at times. 
I know. Because of the use of barcode scanners, which can really easily select the default action by mistake. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And sometimes that's fine. But if the default action is something that can't easily be undone, it's risky in an environment with barcode scanners. Yeah. Okay. Like delete the database. <laughs> <laughs> Little Bobby yeah, table, we call him. <laughs> it, does some part of this um, relate to what kind of decisions, whether they're default or not, um, require or should have a "Are you sure?" kind of kind of thing? I'm thinking about buckets. There's a difference between remove this bucket, remove this record from the bucket, from the bucket or, or remove or from remove the database. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know it. It uh, and I, I, uh, you know I. I can't think of a good example where there isn't a, a are you sure, but um, it, that, some that's decisions. a great one, though, because it's speaking of buckets, like every single time I go in there, I'm like, OK, make sure you pick the one remove that you want, not the other remove. Don't yeah. do that one. So we'll pay attention to that in the the specs for the for revised buckets is what you're saying. The, be careful yes. with your remove buttons. That, that could be amazing. Thanks. <laughs> we'll do. No problem. I got you, Ruth. Uh, so, yeah, I think that we should probably kind of document, you know, which modals it would be dangerous to have the the action button be the default um, keyboard action because of barcode scanners and and things like that. But I do think that, it, that that thought process, that needs to be documented. Like, yes. think about right. <laughs> think about this. Is it and dangerous or not, not? I mean, so they're not always dangerous in an obvious way. One thing where I know it came has come up is um, check-in alerts. Closing the check-in alert is not dangerous, but it defeats the purpose of having it if it yeah. disappears without someone seeing it. Mm -hmm. And since they, they tend to come up when you're checking in lots of things, if checking in the next thing, or rather scanning the barcode, closes it and doesn't check in the next thing, you have two problems. You get a check-in that skipped and an alert that wasn't seen. Mm -hmm. That's a mighty fine point you make there. Can I prevail upon you to write that up in a slightly like expanded form uh, that we can put into the notes and eventually into our documentation? So, for example, you talked about you're talking about downloading something. You're talking to Ben, right? Yes. Okay. I'm 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 writing down very quickly, but uh, yeah. You've got it. Okay. That is an excellent thought. And the, this is what I love about UI work because it gets into the interaction as a whole and not just like the words on the button and the placement and the color of the button, all of which are important. Um, but there's so many decisions that go into this. And when you're writing code, you're just like, I need a button here, go. But you have to like stop and think about 10 different things how this dialogue should work. But bars code <laughs> scanners are not. Um, libraries and consortia have different workflows. So what mm -hmm. should be the default? Maybe, you know, it may be that in CW Mars, the default for this thing is, you know, is no. And for Noble, the default for that thing is yes, because we use whatever that process is in a different way. So it's, it's uh, you know, it's, what may be the desist the the default default you know it you still may run into problems um, because of different workflows and while most barcode scanners are default to scan enter not all of mm -hmm. them do and sometimes those are also that's also configurable yeah on the scanner itself which is a yeah. whole other set of defaults right but if outside, outside if of you're our, checking in a lot of things here. and have to enter for each a lot of libraries are not going to consider that viable Maybe some would consider it uh, uh, a suitable precaution on the other hand. I don't mm -hmm. know. Yes, but so, sometimes the, the exactly. configurations on the scanner can can help you with that. And then you don't have problems till you realize you got a new scanner two weeks ago and nobody configured it to not include the enter or, or, or other things. So it's 
you know, it's, it's, uh, there's a lot we can do, but there's a lot that happens, you know. I think that one of the things that, that as a community that we need to be mindful of, and this is um, preaching to the choir for sure, is that we know for a fact that it, this, we're not going to account for every workflow and every yeah. implementation yeah. and to get as close to consensus as possible so that we can have this for developers and things like that, knowing that this may require some customization um, if there are workflows that cannot change um, to accommodate what the defaults are or, or vice versa. Um, knowing that Evergreen is customizable and this type of thing is customizable for a specific implementation. But if we can get as close to the center um, on as many things as possible, it's going to make uh, user interface development that much faster and that much more reliable as well. So at least we know, even going forward, say this is what the default is, we will have to change it. And then also, maybe also oh, having the possibility to develop ways to change it in an easier manner down the road as well. I'm sorry, I interrupted you, Elizabeth. Oh, I was just gonna say that 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 sometimes sometimes something you know could be a library setting. Sometimes making certain setting sticky isn't is is enough to be responsive enough to everyone's workflow because it you know, it it only changes when you when you switch a task, and now you're doing one where you do want to um, uh, use strict barcode, or you don't want to use strict barcode, or whatever. So sometimes just having a stickiness um, mm -hmm. mitigates a lot of the problem, or or whatever. Sometimes you need something heavier. Yeah, one of the other things that I'm thinking about that may come into play with the dialogues um, and the button actions is um, potentially having a user preference um, that would people to say they don't ever want things to be auto-focused. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm thinking primarily of screen reader users here because yeah. we do things like on the catalog, we skip over all of the filter options that come before the, the keyword input. And then we have to like, we have to think about how that works and how we indicate that there are, you know, there are input fields before what we just focused you on, or we have to rearrange them. Um, but I'm, I'm thinking, you know, there's a lot of places where we auto focus on the first useful field, but there's other stuff before that that's important. Um, that, you know, visually we can see that, but a screen reader user doesn't know that that stuff is there and that we just skipped past, you know, five important things. So I, I was thinking of screen reader users when I, I thought about creating this setting that would just say, no, never autofocus anything, just start me at the, you know, at the title of the page or whatever. But I'm thinking it might also be useful for people who work in circulation and do like barcode scanning a lot. And then we could mm -hmm. just say, nothing's going to be autofocused, mm -hmm. including the, the dialogue buttons. You can use your scanner all day long, but you're going to have to like press tab or use your mouse and hit the right button. And um, we can make sure it's the first tab stop, but it's not going to be pressed by default. That is a great idea. Yeah, in agree. addition to that idea, I would say that this is something that would need to be documented pretty heavily because so, user interface specialists and people who have conversations with user, user interface specialists understand what autofocus means. Um, most people do not, and they just take it for granted. Um, when you, I just opened up the catalog, I'm like, I'm so curious, and there it is. It's autofocused right in that query box, and it skipped right over all the format, keyword, the search type, all of that stuff. Um, and it's something you take for granted because generally speaking, you wanna put in your query stuff. Mm -hmm. I would say, well, I think your average circulation staff doesn't know what it means. Um, your average, well, I don't know if this is true, but Certainly a lot of people who use screen readers um, do know what do. it is. Because Absolutely. they are forced to think. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and you're right. We do not 
and I know this from playing around with a screen reader, I don't need one, but I was like, Evergreen traditionally has not been friendly with screen readers. And that is very unfortunate. We're working a lot on that. Yes, yes. Yeah, it is. It has not been good in the past. It's still not good. We're we're improving gradually. And another thing to keep in mind with this too, and this is tangential, but it is going to become applicable. Uh, one of the things that the board is doing um, and the community has agreed to do are the um, are having VPATs mm -hmm. generated. And then we started with the OPAC basically because it's low hanging fruit and it's kind of small in a good test environment, but it will go into the staff interfaces. And this is something that they will uh, be looking at those people who are putting together the template for, for us. So all that to say, good thing we're talking about it. Neat. <laughs> and in fact, there's Amazing. a link to that in just a bit down in the next part of our agenda where I've got community updates, I put in a little thing about the VPAT. Um, and that's one of our, our updates because I mentioned last time that that was coming soon and now it is more or less here. We're waiting on the final version, but uh -huh. um, yeah. So right now we have the OPAC, but we will have more of those coming um, to evaluate the staff screens. Well, it's um, way past. It's way past time for um, libraries and our, our community to imagine that there's no such thing as hiring a visually impaired uh, staff member. Yeah, that's you know, right. That, we're all that, getting old and becoming visually impaired. Well, <laughs> yes, it's, it's because it's expected. It's the it law. Should be it's, you know. It's, yes. Um, just before pandemic, um, our state, Massachusetts, did a um, a. a three day program on on accessibility. And it was really aimed at, at state agencies and, and uh, nonprofits that work with state agencies and, and all of that, but they did invite librarians and there were only a couple of us there. And it was shocking to me, first of all, how many people in the room were using sc screen readers or had all sorts of other mobility and, and accessibility issues. So you're, you know, it's really hard to be thinking like, oh, this stuff isn't really important when the person in front of you is, you know, is clearly does. And how many of the agencies um, are really required to provide all the documentation they do and so on, no matter what format it's in, um, in, a, in a format for um, that, that the visually impaired um, mm -hmm. and, and others, uh, you know, can truly use it. And it was, it was really a humbling experience um, to, uh, you know, to to see that and to to be to be part of that. And you know, we're big on inclusivity. You know, except for oh, staff, we would you know, if they can't see, we just couldn't possibly hire them. You know, that's that's uh, that's that's shocking to me. There is a new book that just came out about a month ago or so. I'll put it in the chat. It's called Crip Authorship, um, but it's about uh, disability in libraries, and it talks a lot about staff and not just patron services. It's an academic book, um, so, you know, go in expecting that. Um, <laughs> but it's free. You can um, get it from the, I think it's the New York University Press. Um, let me, I'll grab the link real quick. It's really good. Uh, I just started reading it. There's a chapter like halfway through that was on, um, uh, like publishing and, and academic writing and publishing as a person with disabilities, um, and tying together accessibility with all of the other, um, sort of like critical cataloging and critical librarianship ideas about, inclusion and, you know, things like changing subject headings um, and thinking about how accessibility fits into that world of, of thought. It was really great. Uh, anyway, side note. Um, I'll put this in the chat so you can download it there. It's a great read if you like academic writing, which I do, sort of, or at least I can put up with it. <laughs> I'm just going to write down in our notes my 
thought on um, autofocus as a user preference. That's thinking ahead a little bit. It's not there yet. We don't even have a good framework right now for user preferences in Evergreen. We have workstation preferences, but that's not the same thing. Um, Uh, it may also, hmm, yes, be worth, and maybe this is exactly what you're thinking about, and I'm just like wasting oxygen. That's possible. There are some workstation settings that I think need to be user settings, um, that they should be, and, and I don't know because obviously my attention is split and I apologize for that. Um, okay. If if there is some um, tracking that has started to document the workstation settings and if they should be considered for development as user settings instead. Not that I know of. Andrea, do you know of anything like that? No, I think we should start that document right now. Not formally. I know that there are some things that we've looked into internally that I know that in the kind of that realm of user preferences would be great someday. Um, but no, I don't think that we've really formally started writing anything down about like that. And I'm not aware of any community efforts to do so. Either. Oh, that makes me feel so good. I mean, it makes me feel bad on the one hand, but also I would have felt like a jerk saying, hey, we should do this. And literally somebody had spent like, months and months like doing it i've done that before and i felt like a jerk i mean it's like when you file that launch the best way to search launch pad is to file a bug that's a duplicate and then and have somebody, somebody say that's a yeah, duplicate yeah a duplicate. And you're like thank you i was looking for that original yes. same same, same yes way. yes i've also done that you want me to start that document right now are you are you okay to do that absolutely i'm typing docs.new here we go that sounds amazing we're And I, I do have an internal document where I've kind of noodled on this a little bit and I will copy all of that or anything that's relevant from that um, into this uh, as soon as we get done with this meeting. Let me drop a link. Because this is something when we commissioned a VPAT or well, when King County commissioned a VPAT for some staff client interfaces, this a lot of the things that were identified kind of came back to there needs to be a user preference for this, yeah. yeah. Which is which is when our internal noodling about that started. So yeah, things like uh, font size and default fonts, um, and the other thing that we talked about was in the context of grids, the spacing, uh, and how wide that is in the Bootstrap screens versus how tight it is in the Angular JS screens. Can we just and agree we as a community to... to never use Century Gothic? Can we just agree? Okay. Yes. Okay. That, that's, a, that's all I need. Yes. Just never use Century Gothic. I have papyrus, a whole list. But I feel like we're past Papyrus. Or the bad news is sand. they're going to use, yeah, Common Comic Sans. Yes. <laughs> One of my very favorite <laughs> catering companies here in my town uses Comic Sans and everything. I love them and they are brilliant cooks, but every time I see it, I'm like, y'all. No. Well, but just some they're using it ironically. Maybe. No. <laughs> These are my friends and they are not. Oh. <laughs> so there is a funny thing about Comic Sans in that it can be very helpful to people with dyslexia because yes. every letter has a unique shape. And it, in, yes. in Century Gothic, all of the round letters are so similar that you can't tell them apart. And that is why I despise them, Stephanie. Century Gothic and Story Graph switched to it a few months ago in its UI, and I wrote them. Does a letter it make your eyeballs like, want to like go after yes. somebody? Yeah, yeah. In like the in when the in the really fine print, it's actually really hard to read because. All and also, I apologize. I'm reading through a 60 page document. You can't see, it, but it's it's okay. in Century Gothic. <laughs> They're very all kind right. people. I like them. Well, we have a new document started up for documenting our workstation versus user prefs. Um, and I dropped the link in there. It's empty right now. There's nothing in it, um, but it is linked mm -hmm. from our agenda and we can go and start thinking about these things. And I will drop a reciprocal link so we can get back between these documents.
Just a little side note on that. One of the things that we are always asking each other and that people are, you know, is like, well, wait a minute, is this a user setting or is this a library setting? Wait a minute, is this a workstation setting? Oh, library um, settings. And, you know, <laughs> even when you encounter them, you don't know which that might be in your context or or whatever. So I, I always want a way to like hover over something and have it say. See, also your, global your, flags. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. For that matter, like it's not just a question of where do I go to change it, but also when I'm changing it, who am I changing it for? Yeah, well, that's like, the... You want to know what are the consequences of changing it? Am I just doing it for my login? Yeah. For everyone who uses this workstation? Yeah. I have so um, many thoughts about how to do settings et better. <laughs> yeah, this is like my personal windmill. I will make it better someday, yes. I promise. <laughs> okay. I Everything that Ben settings. just said. Like, what am I changing? For whom? Why is it eight different yeah. places? I will, I will you tear are my down. People. That's all I can I will say. tear you it down the library people. settings interface. That is the last thing I do in this community. I will <laughs> help you stomp on the ashes, Andrea. <laughs> okay. And we hope it's not the last thing you do, but we, you know, we, we, uh, yeah. Yes. But yeah, it, there's just so, it needs to be so much better in a lot of ways. Yeah. Okay. We are <laughs> rapidly approaching the end of our time and we have a lot of good thoughts here. I think what I will do is um, try to, uh, write this up a little bit and get some discussion going on the mailing list in between now and our next meeting and see if we can nail down a few things that would let us get started on the error messages. And we can absolutely pick this up again um, in our October meeting, which will be right after Hackaway, like the day after. Um, and so we will probably have quite a few um, discussions there about some of these things. Um, we can do some updates on that. Is there anything else that we want to document really quickly in this list of things to consider? Um, we've got synonyms, items, copies, holdings. I threw in right after that similar words that mean different things. Holds and holdings um, is yeah. one that I trip over quite often. Um, we've got... Punctuation that creates problems, specifically things like uh, slashes and table columns. We've got button wording, cancel and save in particular. And then we've got the broader question of the dialogue action buttons and autofocus and how to handle that. And then we've got um, some large thoughts on user preferences version versus workstation preferences. In terms of our editorial stuff, uh, what else do we need to think about? Acronyms um, is something that comes up a lot. Acronyms mm -hmm. and abbreviations. I feel like we need, mm -hmm. we have a glossary in the docs, but the, I don't think it's very complete. Um, and I think we need to also think about on-screen help um, and that. And I know that Blake, you have that one big bug on that, uh, that where you were thinking kind of broadly about how to do that. Um, I can reply to that because it is a very large question of how we're going to manage the content of that. But I agree with the overall intent of having a lot of on-screen help. And I feel like abbreviations and acronyms are a big place where that would be relevant. Um, um, arrangement slash order of things. Like when you have a page or a menu that is chock full of stuff and Maybe you even correctly figure out what it's going to be called. Like they're going to use the word item, not copy. But you might still have to look through the entire list to find it. If it's mysteriously not in alphabetical order and the thing you want is at the end, um, you know, and sometimes alphabetical order is the wrong choice. But I am constantly being surprised in Evergreen by things not being in the order I expect and having trouble finding things as a result. No one of the things is in the Angular menus. You can at least select the actions that you want to display. Um, but I don't think that you can reorder them without changing, rebuilding that menu yet. It, I know you can't. And I say yet just to leave the possibility <laughs> for future development. I was actually going to mention that because that to me is the... Um, 
is a bright light <laughs> of of uh, a way to do customization that um, and particularly in the actions for item status of which there are like 300 um, and for your library or in our case for all of noble there may be many of those that we would never use and, and to just to just declutter that menu by taking off the actions that are never the right answer for you and making it easier to find the ones that are I don't yes. know. we I haven't don't seen that at cw mars yet but i am looking forward to it but i will I say know. like thinking of those actions menus there are subcategories like show and edit yeah but things are not necessarily where you expect to be in those menus yeah um there are things under show that do not seem to me like showing and things that do seem like show that aren't um some of those may truly be wrong and some of that is just the inevitable cataloging problem yes that when you try to categorize right, right. when you try to categorize something you kind of are thinking of one use case for that and you're thinking of a different use case for what you would be doing with it mm -hmm. and you know and you don't want to put it in like three different places because it might be you know and it you know, but I, I just think, first of all, I think the categories helped a lot and the ability to hide things that you are not, you know, that you're not going to be, that are not going to ever be the right choice. Yeah. I, I just thought that was a. When do we know, think that we'll have angularization of item status? Does anybody like know of like that being on somebody's development plate at this moment? Bill Erickson has been working on various pieces of CERC, but I don't know. I know um, that. <laughs> I don't know if he are. includes item status in that or not. Um, in terms of other uh, Burbage things, sometimes actions as well as column names are mm -hmm. very esoteric. Yes. Um, plain language. <laughs> plain language sometimes like i feel like and this might literally be true that they're literally just pulling like the column name from the idl or something like i mean it's, it's and they're developer words and i say that with love because i love all of my developers <laughs> but they're not like <laughs> librarian words they're developer words um that is really what the reports interest group was getting into with the question of the display fields in reports because those do directly come from the idl and a lot of them are developer language and we use display fields in a different context in a totally different other part of evergreen yeah oh let's add that to our list oh god <laughs> <laughs> let me go back up to where Sorry. we did no no you're right we have we already covered where we're gonna put all these where this document's going to finally be firmed up and recorded, like just on the wiki or? Yeah, it's on the wiki. We have, um, so right now in the UI group, we have a design system roadmap that contains a lot of other pieces besides the editorial style. It also has some, like a list of some of the visual things that we need to hammer out. So right now our outline is there. It, it probably needs to be broken out of the roadmap file into its own thing but i'm envisioning that the editorial style guide will live in the wiki yeah yeah i was asking because when we were looking at the google one at the beginning you know that sure looked a lot like our a lot like antora yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I, was, I was like oh what if we had uh, you know what if we had a second site that was like docs dev or like like what google's got the development.google. Mm -hmm. you know it was like you know developer yeah. dot evergreenils.org or something like that i feel like we should just use the wiki for that because otherwise we get into questions of like versioning and release cycles for the style guide and i don't want that i want it to be constantly yeah, yeah the, the, you're absolutely right that, that's part of the one of the hang-ups is is tracking the git and all that and yeah um, it could be a different Git repo too, you know. Uh, I, don't know. I don't want people to have to fight with Git. Yeah, yeah, up. and yes. that's the other one. Yeah, so absolutely, you know. So the the wiki probably, I mean, Google Docs is maybe the lowest common denominator, but it is, and I think we could start a draft there. That's what I did for the accessibility document. Um, but if there are developer notes in the documentation, then that could link back into the wiki. 
sure. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, just making probably... any of these decisions is a big is a big plus just you know um and where it ends up and how it ends up being used but mm -hmm. you know we we blame developers for using developer language or whatever but you know people writing specs and 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 looking at things and on launchpad didn't necessarily suggest any better words or you know or or any of that it's kind of like the buttons all over again if you just say there should be a button mm -hmm. there's, there's, there's going to be a button some color some location and mm -hmm. and all of that so maybe specifications or testing can you know start yeah. trying to comply with buttons are know, not this. magical elements yeah. they require yeah. work and decision making yeah yeah and having something like that guide like we saw with the modal with the left and right and button and just we that would take all the guesswork if we had that and then every time that came up we would just be like well this is how you do it and it's always yeah. it's always this way yeah and... well, why do we do it that's because we decided on it <laughs> all right. Yeah. right yeah right. and that's have you gotten consensus of... yeah a long time ago yeah. yeah that's the goal of having a design system wow. so that the developers don't have to think about these questions in the heat of creating something they can just yeah. go say this is how it's done this is how i'm going to do it right yeah. um yeah so that like all of this is going to feed into this. Um, so uh, I will skip over the last few items on our agenda because they're really just updates that you can read in the document. Um, this is all great. I think what I will do is probably go ahead and start a Google document for our very early draft of the style guide. Um, and I will send that out to the UI list and we can plug some of these things in and get started on it um, and kind of discuss these questions on the list in between now and our next meeting. Does that sound like a plan? Yeah. Like awesome. Plan. Okay. And I will um, ping the list when I am ready to tackle the development updates and the straightening out of the dialogues and the buttons and the order and the autofocus and all that, because that'll be a little bit separate from the wording questions. That'll be sometime in the next two months. Okay. Cool. Thanks, Diane. This is great. This is really, I'm, I'm really feeling very hopeful for the future and all that. Yay. I like Stephanie. making people feel hopeful and not like we have a ton of work to do, which is, yeah. you know. Yeah, we always also. have a ton of work to do. Yeah. Sorry, Blake, what was that? I was going to ask, since we're on the call and you mentioned the on-screen docs, I was wanting to talk to you about that, but we, we can oh, yeah. wait okay. until after. Let me stop recording. And we will end the meeting now and we can stick around and chit chat about things for now. And I will see you all in October. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye.